Hi, I'm Chris Noring and welcome to this video on view and events. In this video, we'll talk about various aspects when it comes to events. We'll, uh, we'll talk about there being many different types of events. We'll also look on uh, event handlers, uh, code that runs because an event happened. We'll also look at something called event modifiers, and those are really, really interesting. It enables you to control the process of uh, how events would be handled. Lastly, we'll look at how to type less in, in the sense that we will show a shorthand. So instead of using the construct that you would normally use to wire up events, you'd instead use this shorter version. But first, let's dive into various events. Many things can generate events. Uh, it could be a custom event, it could be a button click event, it could be a key up or a key pressed and so on. Or it could be your uh, scroll bar, for example. A lot of events can be generated and we can capture all of those events, but we have to start somewhere. So we're going to start with something simple, which is a button and a button click. Those are the most likely events that you're going to, that's going to happen anyway. So if you look here at, in our markup, we see that we have a button and we want to capture any clicks from that button because it might be used to submit a form or, or do some kind of save or, or something. We're interested in the button. We're interested in knowing when that click happens. So what we use is something called v-on. Now, by using this directive called v-on, we need to specify what type of event. We need to specify whether it's a key up or a click or whatever kind of event that we want to capture. So we add a colon and then we add the type of event, which in this case is a click. Now, once we've established what event we want to capture, we need to say, hey, this method here in the code should capture this event. So we specify something called handled click. Once we specify handled click, we need to go into our code and ensure that handled click exists. So what we need is a method within the methods property. And in this case, we just add handled click. And on top of that, we want to capture the event itself in case we want to investigate things around the um, element that actually caused the event. So we do that. We don't do much with the event, but in other cases, if we want to, but just know if you want to capture the original event that generated this, this is how you would pass it. What we're doing inside of here is to increment this coins variable. Uh, imagine that you're playing Super Mario, for example. It would make sense if, if um, you were to uh, capture some kind of coin, right? So you would want that coin to be incremented. Let's have a look at this in, in our browser and see how that works. So we have set up this handler and we had it point to the click event and we used the V on to get there. Before we go as far as going towards browser, we want to make sure that we do nothing but handling the click. So now let's head to our browser. So every time we hit this button, we see how the handle click method is being invoked. And what it does is to update the coin. We see that coin here goes from zero to one. We can click it again just to make sure it still works. And that's all great. But let's uh, head back to our code because we want to talk about something more complex, how events work in JavaScript. So the nature of an event is to bubble. And that means it starts from an inner element like this button, and it goes towards an outer element and to an outer element and so on. This behavior of the event just going up, up, up is called bubbling. Now we can stop that behavior or we don't have to uh, deal with it at all. So for example, if we only have a handler here that handles this button click event, nothing much happens. But we can actually have we can actually have an outer element handle this click too. Now I'm going to show you the bubbling nature that this event actually keeps on going. So we add another V on click, but this time we point to outer click. So now if we click this, we see that the event first start to handle handle click, which is the click on our button. And then we see how this event keeps on going. It actually keeps on going up, which is the bubbling. So we see how this outer click is uh, being invoked because now the parent element that the button was residing in, our div, is uh, also able to handle this. Now, in some business application, for example, this could be a nice little feature. You could be using that for some kind of logging, or you could use that to do some other part of business logic that you know the inner um, event didn't handle. Now, in our code, we can add something called modifiers. What that means is that we can go into this event, for example, and say stop. So when we do stop, that means that uh, 
it will stop there, it won't bubble, it won't actually go to its parent. So just by us adding this dot stop, let's go to our browsers and you see how that works. So we invoke handle click, but we see it doesn't really reach after click this time around. And this is because we stopped it. We stopped the whole bubbling. There's also another thing we can do, which is called once. And when we do once, this means that the event handler will only react once. So we could have these one-offs. Right? So sometimes we want the button to work every single time we click it. Sometimes we only want it to work on the first time we interact with it. Let's demo that as well. So first time we click it, it works. And we see the auto click working as well. Next time we click it, we see that handle click is no longer reacting because it had a once on it, whereas the outer click was good to handle it each and every time. So we see how that stop would work. Now, if we were to add this capture uh, command and then stop, we would actually completely reverse in what order things would be handled. So by saying capture, what we're saying is let the outermost element handle this first. So what we are saying is that the outer click will actually handle the event first and then handle click would handle it. But we're also adding this functionality stop on top of it, which means that it will actually never reach the inner element if we put that. So if we remove this, it would go from parent to child. But if we add the stop to it as well, we will never reach the child. And this is a very fine grained control. And as you can also see, if we want to have many of these modifiers, we just have to do a dot and then the name of the modifier, dot capture, dot stop, and so on. So let's try to demo the functionality for this one too. So now we see how the outer click is reacting first. And we see that the handle click never get there. And the reason why handle click never gets there is because we are using this capture modifier and we are using this stop. And the stop is what makes it stop at the parent level. So the shorthand is really us not having to type everything. So Right now you see how I have to type v dash on colon click. I could just get rid of v dash on and type. Now let's have a look at this shorthand. What I've already done is to replace the v dash on and I've done so already. So you're seeing I'm getting rid of the v dash on colon and just replace all of that with an at sign. I can do the same here. I can just do at and it would mean the same. So if you want to save a few keystrokes, definitely do that. Let's make sure this still works. We see that our handler is still being called and the handle click is not being called because of this prevent stop behavior. But yeah, all in all, I hope this was a useful video for you to see what kind of events you could have, how you would handle events and how you can modify the behavior of events. And if you didn't know about this bubbling behavior before, you do now. So yeah, thanks all.